Okay, so there's an insane amount of mosquitoes, but for some reason we decided to do a video out here. Not sure why. Okay, what's up? Welcome back. We're outside. For some reason, there's 10,000 mosquitoes, so we're not going to do it. All right, so originally we were going to make this video outside. There's just way too many mosquitoes. It, it's not even feasible to do it. So we're going to find somewhere new. But today we're talking about bike sizing, how to choose the right bike. This is a question that a lot of people have. And um, this video, we're gonna go over a very basic way of knowing what size to look for, how to pick one, and how to know you're making the right choice, especially when we are still ordering bikes which we can't see in person. All right, let's get to it. My name's Chris and welcome back. Today we're talking bike sizing. All right, so obviously bike sizing is important. You have to take into consideration a lot of different things before deciding what bike to buy. So generally speaking, bike sizing is kind of straightforward. It seems a little more overcomplicated. They make it seem a little overcomplicated, but it's really not too bad. I would first start, no matter what type of bike you are, mountain bike, road bike, doesn't matter. We're just on a little back country road here. So. Not on a roadway. So whichever bike you do, a mountain bike, road bike, gravel bike, it doesn't matter. I would always start with what the manufacturer's suggestion is online. That is one of the best ways to go from it. They've done the research. They are definitely well-trained and well-versed in what their bike fits like. There is little asterisks to that. You can't always go off that. Some brands fit big, some brands fit small. So just because you read a medium in a Trek doesn't mean you'll be a medium in a Norco or Giant. If this is a bike you are ordering, then potentially look the size up online and then your next step will be going into a bike store to try and find similar models or similar sizes to test out. If you see over there, that's the river. And the river should be about two three feet lower if not four feet lower so it's pretty high right now there's tons of lay there's tons of water everywhere so mosquito situation is getting out of control it doesn't look like there's anywhere outside where you can stop without dying instantaneously from every single bug bite you'll get back to step two step two so you've gone on the website you found the bike you want you go and reference the sizing chart on it now, there is still a bit of a shortage and or you might be looking at multiple bikes. You wanna double check, you wanna double check a couple of the sites. Double check the sizing and 90% of the sizing will go off your height plus your inseam. Those two features, inseam and height, are definitely the top two to go off. Everybody fits a little bit differently though. So some people can have long legs, short torsos, long arms. You do have to adapt and understand you might fit a medium in inseam only, but in like arm length and torso length, you might feel a little cramped and over the top on it. And it depends on the bike again. So once you've got a couple comparisons online for what size you need, go into your local bike store and find a couple bikes. They don't have to be the same bike, but they have to be a similar bike. Get on them, sit on them. I generally fit a medium or a large in most brands. I'm right on 511, it really doesn't matter what size I pick, I can be comfy everywhere. But, a lot of brands, but there's always the exceptions. I've rode a medium Norco in the past and I've rode a medium Trek. The medium Norco definitely fit bigger than the Trek. A medium Santa Cruz though, fits very small. In comparison, very small. I think it's max recommended height is like five foot nine. So it's pretty low as well. Trek, for instance, is one of the few companies to make a medium large. So that is an additional size within the medium and large range, which fits honestly really, really well. It reduces that reach and it's gonna make it just a little bit higher standover than a medium, but not as high as a large. A lot of people like this sizing and it does work really well. Third and final step to picking the right size is a pretty simple one, to be honest. I mean, look at this thing. What is this? That thing's awesome.
All right, so step three is the final one, which is once you've got down and you've sat on a bike, you've sat on a couple of them. You know, I actually made some of my first YouTube videos back here. If you check them out, I'd come out on my lunch break, I'd make them. Now we're choosing the evening. I don't know why there's so few mosquitoes in the city, but there's a lot out of town. This is okay though. So step three is remembering adjustments can be made. There might not be a perfect fit for you. Go off the closest one that feels comfortable. And if you have a longer torso and longer arms, but you have short legs, then you may have to stick with a medium just to get a comfortable standover height. And then remembering that you can get in a longer stem if you feel like you need it reached out a little bit more. You can lower those handlebars. You can raise them up with stem risers. There's lots of customization after the fact. If you're going for a road bike or something a little more fitted like a triathlon bike, that one I would highly recommend speaking to a professional. They will get a better fit for you. And just remember that those are very adjustable so they can fit a wide variety of people. But if you mess it up on one thing, it can really make for an uncomfy ride if you're doing a longer overall ride experience. With mountain biking, or gravel riding, you're a little more up and down. It's not as static as road biking or triathlon would be. So those ones, you really gotta nail the fit. Gravel though, you're up and down a little bit more. There's just so many mosquitoes. I lied, I was wrong. Okay, this is much better than it was, but could be worse. Part of step three and customization is remembering that if you are right in the middle of two sizes, you fit a medium and a large, many brands have crossover. Don't overthink it too much. A smaller fitting bike will be easier to control. Overall, it will just be really nimble and light and maybe a little closer feeling so you sit a little more upright. A larger bike though will be a little more stretched out and a little bit longer feeling. It's not hugely noticeable on most bikes, but that overall stretched out feeling plus the wheelbase is longer can feel large and make this turning a little bit slower if you're on the smaller side of it. I normally always recommend go people go to a smaller size if they're doing trails and if they're doing roady stuff go to the larger size but it's it's all it's up to you in the end you don't need to stress about it bike sizing is not as it is serious to get a good fitting bike but it's not as stressful as it needs to be a lot of people overthink it hopefully this one was helpful it's a quick overview of what you should look for when picking a bike size you don't need to stress there's lots of bikes out there but realistically, there is easy ways to find a bike and there's hard ways. So that was just a quick video, nothing too fancy there. Hopefully it helps a little bit. Keep watching and uh, good luck.